Let's pray before the reading of the Word and just release our faith uh, this evening to hear, not, not from me, but to hear from Him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we agree together as touching this thing, asking for utterance, specific, exact, what you would say to us, what, what the Master Jesus would say to us if He was standing here in the flesh tonight. Cause it to come out. Uh, give us ears to hear it and eyes to see it and grace to do it. And we purpose beforehand not to be hearers only, but to be doers of the Word. We confess and say that your Word is illuminating. It is delivering. It is healing. It is life changing. It is life itself. And we thank you for quickening us with your Word tonight. We ask for answers, direction, solutions right now for situations people are dealing with in the house and watching by internet and other means. We say the answers are coming. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Sit out loud. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. for giving us answers, giving us answers. Specific, answers. specific answers, specific direction, specific direction. Help, for right now. help for right now. Amen. amen. Just go ahead and believe you receive it. And it could come through my mouth, and it, it wouldn't have to come through my mouth. The Lord could say, say it to you just in your heart while you're sitting here or while you're watching my internet or TV. Do you believe the Lord speaks to His people still today? Yes. And His words are life. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Well, here's some words that are life right here in the book, Romans 12. Romans 12 and verse 2 Romans 12, 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Verse 3, For I say through the grace given to me to every man that's among you not to think. So he was talking about uh, transformed by the renewing of your mind that involves your thinking and he's specific about thinking right here. Not to think more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. The, uh, the New Living Testament of verse 2 says don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Would you like to know the will of God yes. for your life? Well, here, here is how. Our thinking must be changed. And we, he, he's writing to believers. These are not people that are yet to be born again. The letter starts off with talking to the saints who are at Rome. And he tells people that are already born again, they can be transformed into a different person. And it occurs by the renewing of our mind. God's words translation says, don't become like the people of this world. He said, don't be conformed. There are pressures in the world all around us. They're endeavoring to press us into the shape of all the other non-believers. The pressure is to conform to ungodliness and faithlessness and fear. The Bible said, don't do that. Don't let those pressures mold you into a cookie cutter copy of the rest of the world. You're not like the rest of the world. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. You're different. And you're supposed to be very different. I didn't say weird. <laughs> Some people hear that and they think that excuses all their weirdness. No, no. Being Christ-like will make you different. Hmm? And the Lord, you know, the Christ, He's not weird. 
He's right. But the reason you'll stand out and be so different is because so much of the world is wrong. They think they're okay, but they're not. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. God's Word said don't become like the people of this world. Instead, change the way you think. Say it out loud. Change the way you think. Say it again. Change the way you think. You, did the Bible tell you and I to change the way we think? Yes. Then what should we do? Yes. We should be about changing the way we think. Yes. Did you change the way you think any this week? Yes. From the previous week? Yes. <laughs> yes. Something to think about. Did you? Yes. Well, it's easy to go, yeah, what? In what? You've got you to be specific. What? did you think the week before that you don't think that way now? You think a different way. Otherwise, it's just religious hype. No, we're talking about reality. We're talking about you did think this way, now you don't. You think a different way about that area, about those things. And the Bible tells us that will transform you into another person. Is this exciting or not? Yes. People say, well, you know, you have to love me the way I am. <laughs> Said who? <laughs> we can love you without loving all your goofy ways. <laughs> well, it's just the way I am. No, it's the way you have become, not the way you have to be. Amen. Well, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Why in the world would you refer to yourself as an old dog? The Bible said you are a new creature, a new creation created in Christ Jesus. No. Uh, such, such a misconception that I, you know, this is just the way I am. No. No. You didn't come into the world that way. You become that way. And you have become the way you are through a series of month to month, year to year thoughts and ways of thinking and talking and doing. But the good news is you're not locked into that. I don't care if you've been a certain way 95 years. You can change tonight. You believe it or not? Does the Word of God have the power to change you? No matter how long you've thought that way, but you've got to be open and you must give the Word first place. You know, a lot of people give lip service to the Word being first place, but it is not actually first place in their life. Uh, I know I, I preached something some years ago, and a lady came to me uh, after the service and was upset, and she said, well, that, that can't be right, what you said. And I said, well, why? She said, well, because the song says. <laughs> I said, the what? And she's quoting to me a song that they used to sing in church. I was quoting scriptures to her. She's quoting a song. Well, see, the song, in her mind, has preeminence over the scripture. And a lot of times folks don't realize it, but they, they have those uh, traditions. That's what mom and them believed, and, and our church, and our group, and I just always thought, and, and people got things mixed in together. Well, that's, that's being an American. You should be a Christian first. That's right. That's right. <coughs> right? Uh, and you should examine what you believe with the Word of God. Now, no one here, myself included, you, not one of us, uh, is at the place where we don't need any more mind renewal. Because Paul said after extensive revelation, being caught up to the third heaven, uh, got the revelation that we have in the Bible, he said he knew in part. 
He knew in part. Well, if you only know part, what else does that mean? There's parts you don't know. And that's where the problem comes in. Because if you don't know some things, you can jump to some conclusions and assume and come up with some wrong deductions. And uh, people have done that, and there are things that have been preached from the pulpit that was the preacher's deductions that wasn't the word and it wasn't right. And because people heard it in church or because it was part of their denomination's dogma, they thought, well, that's got to be God. That's got to be the Bible. And it was actually contradicting scriptures. And none of us have arrived at a complete mind renewal so that we think exactly like God on every detail. So what that means is we should have enough humility to be open. And so when the word shows up that we've been thinking wrong, I don't care if mama and grandma and the previous 20 generations were just off the wall about that and we the first one to find out about it, we need to say, well, the Lord's right. I don't care how many people think that way. I don't care how long I've been thinking that way. The word says this. So that can't be right. So I'm changing. The word will never change. It doesn't need to. Heaven and earth will pass away. So when you find out you and the word are out of sync, you're always wrong. Every, every single time. And the word is always right. And what's it time to do? It's time not to be conformed to the world, but be conformed to the word, and that will transform you into a different person. Can you say glory? To God. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Go to 1 Corinthians, the, the 13th chapter. We, we were just talking about this, and I want us to look at the scriptures a little, a little further in it. Verse 9 For we know what? In part. Now, the, the, the Spirit of God is prompting Paul to say this, and he had more. Revelation than, than most. We know in part, we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So there is a thinking that is childish thinking, isn't there? And if you grow up, your thinking changes. And you think differently than you did as a child. That's true naturally. It's also true spiritually. And a key to maturing and growing up is that you change the way that you speak, your understanding changes, your thinking changes. And you, do you understand that if that happens, you changed. I mean, if you, you have changed the way you think, you have changed how you understand and perceive, you have changed the way you talk and how you act, you're a different person. Can you see this? This is transformation from the Word. Now, in, uh, in talking about this, um, You'll find that there is a big problem all over the planet, including Christians, in taking thoughts and being too quick and too hasty to embrace them and accept them. We were talking a few moments ago about people, you know, the lady that said, well, the song said. Right. She accepted that as truth she could build her life on because she heard somebody singing in a song. Should she have examined those thoughts and where they came from and their validity? Should she have vetted, if you will, those thoughts before just blindly accepting them as truth? Should everybody Examine every message they hear. Oh, yes. I don't care how much you, you, you care about your, your pastor, your leader, uh, people that you love and, and have received so much through. They're human. They could make mistakes. Mm -hmm. 
They could throw in an idea they came up with on their own. Sure. Hello. Hmm? Yes, sir. They, and they could mean well and just be wrong. Not trying to do something uh, underhandedly or deceive, just be wrong, deceive their self. And try to pass that on to you. Should you examine every thought with the Word? Should you examine it? Look with me in Proverbs, if you would. Go to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 14 and 12. It says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but is it right? The end thereof are the ways of death. Are there things that can seem right, but they're deadly? See, that's, the, that's how the enemy is. He's very deceptive. He, he doesn't show up at your front door with a red suit and a pitchfork. And a name tag says devil. Oh, no. No, no. The Bible said he transforms himself into an angel of light. And he doesn't come overtly to deceive you and go, this is a lie and I'm going to make you believe it. No, no. He presents it so that it seems right. And he's been around a long, long time. We have not. And even the wisest among us doesn't know much. Just hasn't been around long. Compared to beings that have been around for millennia, seen it all, heard it all, you know, it takes 50 years to just kind of get a clue of what's going on down here. <laughs> and so don't, if you try to play mind games with the devil, you're in trouble. Because he can dance around you and he can reason around you and, and what if and what about and how come. If you, if you let him pull you into the realm of reasoning, he will defeat you, confuse you, tie you up and defeat you every time. But if you'll hold him in the arena of faith, I believe the word. What about? No what about. How come? I don't have to know how come. It said this and I believe this. And that's what I'm going to think. Yeah, yeah but. No buts. That's right. <laughs> if you hold him in the realm of faith, you'll overcome every time. He'll not be able to deceive you and trick you. There, there is a way that seems right, but it's not right. There are thoughts that seem true. And feelings that accompany them that are real. But just because it seems rational, it seems reasonable, it seems obvious, and the feelings are strong, does not mean it's true or right. Yeah, but I just feel so. Yeah, but you can be wrong. But it, it, it seems right. Yeah, but you can be wrong. Skip on down to uh, the 15th verse of this same chapter. The simple do what? Believe. Believe every word. But the prudent man looks well to his going. The NIV says a simple man believes anything. Well, did you hear about what's going on over there? What? Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. How you know? So and so told me. You believe everything you hear? Well, so and so told me that so and so didn't like me. A simpleton will believe everything they hear and go ahead and get mad and upset about the person not liking them without ever qualifying or verifying if this uh, tattletale. 
had any clue about what they're talking about or if there's any validity to it. Friend, Christians, I'm not talking about unbelievers now. We, we expect this with, with them. But Christians go through so much pain and torment. They, they, they have trained, allowed the enemy to train them and train themselves to respond instantly negatively at the first hint of any bad news and to assume the worst. That's right. And just get upset and get hurt and get bent out of shape and sometimes go through torment for days only to find out it wasn't really that way. So then you lost days of your life in torment and pain because you were so foolish as to believe whatever you heard. A simple person believes anything. Verse 16 in the NIV, a wise man fears the Lord and shuns evil, but a fool is hot-headed and reckless. Just quick to get mad, quick to get upset because somebody dropped a word in their ear. Somebody suggested something. Or sometimes it just looked like something. How many have found out it's not always how it looks? The Lord began to deal with me about this years ago. And, and he reminds me of it. I, I, I remind myself. And, and when you hear something, especially if it rubs you the wrong way, it is not time to believe the first thing you hear. Right. It is not time to get mad and upset. And you, it's time to find out more. That's right. yes. Hallelujah. That's a good and reserve Decision, judgment, action. Yes. How many understand? This is wisdom. But a fool just goes off. What happened over there? Have you heard? And people just, before they even know any details, they just get mad, they start crying, they get upset, they start using the Lord's name in vain. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. That's using the Lord's name in vain. Yes, yes. Whether you're sticking a cuss word with it or you're just saying, oh my God. When you say God, Lord, Jesus, you need to be either talking to Him or about Him. Hallelujah. And if you're using it as a byword and people yield to fear and they yield to unbelief and they panic. And you can feel the tension in the room. It's just like opening the doors and saying, come on in, devil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're right, sir. You can feel the, the anxiety. It's tangible. Yeah. And how many people go through things, and this is, this is hard on your mind. It's hard on your body, your digestive system, your joints. It's hard on you. Yeah. Yes, it is. And people go through some of this stuff sometimes for days only to find out that it was nothing like that. It was all a big misunderstanding. Or even if it was, there was a simple answer. And God fixed it before the day was over. And you could have saved yourself. So much torment, so much pain, so much anxiety. We are commanded in the scripture be careful for nothing. Yes. Cast all your care over on him. Take no thought. Just right. talking about anxious thought. Don't take it. It will come. Feelings will come. You'll hear reports. You'll see things. And fear will come and try to get on you. And thoughts will come and try to shake you. And it's time to resist. Right. It's time to stand against it and say, no, hold, no. I don't even know what's going on here. Yeah. Right. How do I even know there's anything to be upset about? That's right. That's right. No, it's time to find out more. And no matter what I find out, when I find out, God will still be on the throne and he will still be able to do something about it 
and get us out of this and help us out of this, you got to stay in faith. You can stay in faith. And it's a good life because you're not going around being out of shape all the time. Even if somebody drops a bomb on you and it sounds awful, you'll still stand there and go, well, God's got us through stuff before. And he will again. Keep your cool. Stay in faith. Stay in peace. The Amplified says, the simpleton believes every word he hears. Are you a simpleton? Yes, sir. Are you foolish? Yes, sir. Then do you believe everything you hear? Yes, and the first thing that comes along in the first impression, do you just embrace it and get mad and get upset? Are you a simpleton? No, sir. <laughs> Even if you were this morning, you can change and say, no, <laughs> not anymore. I, maybe I was, if it was five minutes ago, that's, but no more, no more, <coughs> no more. Go down to the 19th chapter of Proverbs. Well, stop by 18 on the way, Proverbs 18 and 17. We're talking about thoughts. Thoughts are powerful. There's life and death in thoughts. There are thoughts, you can just be going along, and thoughts, if you really take them, you can be fine, be happy, be smiling, laughing, but certain thoughts, you take it and really begin to think about it, joy gone, depression feeling. And I mean, just... What happened? Maybe nothing happened naturally but that thought. By the same token, you can be going along, not happy or sad, nothing, no big deal. And there are thoughts that just the thought of it gives you joy. You think about it, and I mean your countenance changes, your feelings change, and, and all you, nothing natural happened. It was a thought. Thoughts are spiritual, and they're powerful, and they come from God, or they come from the enemy. And they can minister life, they can minister death. Didn't the Bible say in Romans to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You think on the wrong thing, it ministers death to you. Why are some people so grouchy? <laughs> so annoying to be around. And there are people, there their family, you love them, but they're just annoying to be around. And no matter what comes up, they'll try to rain on your parade. That you're always down, always griping. What's wrong with them? They are thinking about the wrong thing. Now, come on. Th look, look. It, are those thoughts making them into a certain kind of a person? Yes. It is. Yes. Could they be a different person? Yes. They could be if they would quit yielding to the, thinking about that kind of stuff. Can you see the glorious truth of the word? They could be transformed into a happy person, into a peaceful person, into a person folks enjoy being around. People say, well, yeah, but I got this awful problem. If I could get this fixed. No, it's not true. If that was fixed, there'd be something else. <laughs> it's just your choice. If that's how you're leaning, that's how you're yielding, you can always find something that's not right, something to be upset about, something to gripe. On the other hand, you can always find something to shout about, especially if you're a Christian. If you're a believer, man, they're working on my mansion right now. Right now. That's not fantasy. That's real. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. There's an actual book. My name, my name is there. Your name there too? No matter what's going on, why couldn't I be, why couldn't I think about that? Why couldn't I think about things that are good? 
We, we talked about this uh, a couple of lessons ago about the checklist. He gives it to us in Philippians. Whatever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtuous, any praise, think on these things. He tells you specifically what to think on. And so if it, if it doesn't meet that criteria, you're not supposed to think on it. Yeah, but it's true. Is it? Even if it is. If it doesn't meet the other criteria. So many endure so much torment and grief needlessly, wasting days, weeks, months, years out of their life. Only, you know, when, when you get to the end of it and you look back and you realize what that mourning and grieving and crying and feeling sorry for you got you, it's sad. Because all that happened is you threw away precious days and you missed precious opportunities. You could have been having fun with people. You could have been enjoying life. You could have been apart. But you chose to yield to depression and fear and anger. It is a fool to do it. All of us have made mistakes in this area, but like we just got through saying, <laughs> we, we can put it in the past. And like we said before, you know, you, you and I are how we have become, not how we have to be. We can change. We need to change. So, Let's change. Proverbs 18, are you there? 17, 18, 17. He that is first in his own cause seems just. Remember, there's a way that seems right, but it's not. But his neighbor comes and searches him. The, uh, let's see, look at the NIV on that one. The first to present his case seems right till another comes forward and questions him. Have you ever seen that before? Somebody present, especially somebody that's, that's good at doing that kind of thing, present the case and you think you hear and you think, well, yeah, that seems right. And then somebody else comes along that's just as good presenting the other side and you go, well, hold on here now. But when you were only hearing one side of it, you were buying into it. That's why you got to watch about your first thought, first report, first impression, just jumping on it with both feet and go ahead and respond to it and accepting it like it's true. We know in part. You know, we have seen this again and again with reports of things going on in the church. People tell us this is going on. These folks had this problem. These folks had that problem. And so many times they're, they're heaving and crying and, and carrying on and cutting up. And you, and you think, man, you know, this is about the end of the world. And, and as you get into it, it's just not at all the way that maybe three or four different people portrayed it to be. And so often they were acting like it was life and death and right now, and it wasn't at all. You know, parents, watch about jumping to conclusions with your children. Hmm? Even if they've done dumb stuff before, you need to be believing in them that they're, they'll do better. Right? And love is quick to believe the best. Isn't it? Hold your place here. Go to 1 Corinthians 13. We, we were there. Actually, you don't, you don't have to. They'll put it up on the screen for us. You don't have to. Just, I want to use another translation anyway. In 1 Corinthians 13, uh, 5... Just put it up for us. 1 Corinthians 13, 5. It says, Love does not behave itself unseemly. It seeks not its own. It's not easily provoked. And what else? It thinks, love thinks no evil. Now, these, if you notice again and again, these have to do with what you're doing with other people. And so the idea is thinking evil about them as well. And verse 7 bears this out. In the Amplified, 
verse 7 of 1 Corinthians 13. Love bears up under anything, and everything that comes is, is what? Ever ready. Ever ready to what? So if you hear something bad about somebody, and you're, you just believe it without even checking into it, you're not loving them. Love wouldn't do that. Love, you know, you, you need to, and I don't have to, I'm not saying you got to just be uh, naive and, and act stupid about stuff. I mean, if it's there, it's there. If it's wrong, it's wrong. But you, you don't need to be quick to believe something bad. I've had the Lord minister to me along this area. I've made mistakes in this area in years past particularly, but learned from some of those mistakes. And the Lord deal with me. Somebody tell me so, something bad about somebody, I don't even let it move me. Because I don't know whether it's true or not. Yeah, but they said so. Yeah, but I'm not a simpleton. I don't just believe the first thing I hear. I'm not calling them a liar. They may be sincere. They may be wrong. They may have been given bad information themselves. Right? And even if the information is accurate, they don't know the person's heart and they don't know why they did what they did. And these are all reasons why we are commanded not to judge. Why? Because we are simply not qualified. Yes, sir. You don't know, I don't care how much you think you know, you don't know all that happened. And you certainly don't know the hearts of the people involved and how it got to that and why and why not. And for even if it was terrible, for all you know, by the time you heard it, they've already repented and are right with God and he don't even see it anymore. For all you know. All this comes to this conclusion. Don't assume you know what to think. Thank you, Lord. That's good. See, th this is where we've been making mistakes. We've assumed we're qualified to decide what to think. And we're not. We take a piece of information here and there and decide. Okay, this is what I'm going to think about that. And of course, when you decide what you think and what's true and what's right and what's wrong, then that's how you're going to talk and that's how you're going to act and that's going to uh, direct your plans and responses with them. We need to back up. We need to slow down. And instead of assuming all this stuff, we should ask the Lord how we should think. We should ask Him how we should think about this. Because how many think he sees things differently? Yes. Again and again. Because we're just seeing a little bitty, bitty, bitty piece of it. If that. He sees the whole thing. He sees the end, the beginning, the middle. He not only sees how it got here. He sees where it's going. He sees the hearts. Yes. He knows how we should think about it. We should ask him. How, how should I see this? How should I think about this? Are you with me, friends? Yes. In, in that passage in, in Proverbs, let's finish reading it. it. It deals with that. Proverbs, well, uh, excuse me, go to the 19th chapter of Proverbs. Proverbs 19 and 2. That the soul be without knowledge is not good. And he that hastes with his feet uh, sins. Verse 3. The foolishness of man perverts his way and his heart frets against the Lord. Now, who messed up his way? The foolishness of the man. So who did he get upset with? The Lord. That's being a real dummy. Isn't it? <laughs> who messed up your way? You did from being foolish. So who you get upset at and fret at? The Lord. Everybody say, dumb. 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 
Let me read another translation of this. God's Word translation. God's Word, verse 2, says, A person without knowledge is no good. Humble yourself. When you hear a piece of something, even if it, if it looks that way and, and you want to get mad or upset or whatever, uh, have some sense. Realize, I don't really know anything about this yet. Have some sense. It's not time to get mad, to get upset. It's time to find out more. Uh, a person in a hurry makes mistakes. Verse 2 in the God's Word translation says. A person in a hurry. Well, if you're in a hurry to just assume that's true. And then you go out and call somebody else. And you tell them. Or, or you assume it's true and you jump on your child and you chew them out. And it wasn't true. You jump on an employee. You jump on somebody else and you chew them out. Well, why'd you do this? Why do that? Not give them a chance to explain anything. That's being a fool. It is. Right. And you're going to look so bad right. when you find out the truth. Don't go in like the proverbial bull in the china shop. Go in like a Christian. Come on. Smile and ask some questions. Ask, everybody say ask. Yes. Ask some questions. Man, this has helped me so many times. This has saved me from acting stupid so many times. There are times I thought I knew. But by the grace of God, I just came in and asked some questions. And as I was asking, because I'd, I'd already decided, this is how it is, this is what I'm going to do. That's how you're thinking. So your, your words and plans are going to be the fruit of your thinking. What if your thinking's wrong? Then your words going to be wrong. Your actions going to be wrong. Come on, can you see this? Because they're all the fruit of the wrong thoughts. Can you see why the devil's working overtime in this area trying to feed you with some wrong thoughts? And he'll bring the feelings to back them up. They said this about you. And then he'll bring a feeling. It'll just go all over and you go, that sore rascal, after everything I have done for him, and he do that to me? And man, if you do that, two, three imps will come sit on your shoulder and go, that's sorry. That is your sorry. After everything, and of course, they'll bring everything to your mind. That you, now, if you really give it to them, gave it to them as a gift, you shouldn't be thinking they owe you anything. That's right. So you're off, off, off. Yeah. <laughs> and they may have not said or done any of this. Or even if they did, they might have got convicted the, the minute after, and they may be trying to find you right now to apologize and make it right. You don't know. Right. And wouldn't it be better, instead of you acting like a heathen and running in there and berating them and cussing them, that they come in there and you act gracious and act like a good example and Act like you care about them. Not act like a fool. Say it again. Ask questions. Don't assume. Don't presume. Don't jump to conclusions. Don't just take off hollering and, and firing and breaking and uh, leaving. And that's hasting with your feet. And that's how you sin. Sin means miss it. You're missing it. So many people have quit jobs over the stuff that never happened. People have gotten in terrible arguments with their spouse over the stuff that didn't even exist. It was fabricated, made up by the devil. He lied to her about him and lied to him about her, and they both believed the lies and glared at each other. <laughs> And it doesn't even exist. It's just fabrication. But it feels real and it seems right at the time. But there's a way that seems right that is not. It leads to destruction. And the simpleton believes the first thing they hear and goes off. Of course, we already asked, with no more simpletons in here. Glory to God. 
Isn't that good? Verse 3, God's Word translation, Proverbs 19, 3 says, The stupidity of a person turns his life upside down and his heart rages against the Lord. Today's English version says, Some people ruin themselves by their own stupid actions and then blame the Lord. Yeah. Say it again, dumb. dumb. That's really dumb. <laughs> if you'd have just bit your lip, and just went and asked some questions. Gave people a chance to explain themselves. Gave yourself a day or two to find out more about it. Hmm? Didn't get upset, just stayed in faith. Didn't get to writing people off, marking people off your list, just stayed in love. Hmm? Didn't go into planning your revenge. Hmm? Or your Cold War. <laughs> well, we're just going to conveniently leave them out of everything. <clears throat> and what if what you're, the thoughts you're thinking are unfounded and incorrect? Now you are the one doing evil for no reason. You're doing harmful things against them and being spiteful against them for no cause. Can you see how the devil has manipulated people and how he just keeps strife going? He is a sorry devil. I'm not going to shed one singular tear when he gets what's coming to him. That's right. I'm just going to say, the Lord is righteous. That's <laughs> right. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, let's look at this, and I want to give you some, uh, some examples. 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, and verse 2. He says that you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. Now the Spirit of God is dealing with him to write this to them because there are people that are upset and their faith is being shaken because they think Paul sent them a letter saying that the uh, resurrection is past. And he never sent it. He never said it. But folks have gotten all worked up. And they were shaken in their mind and troubled. Did they jump to conclusions? Yes. Were they too quick to believe something they heard? I know a friend of mine up in the Northeast. This is several years ago. Some people were saying some negative things about me. They fabricated some things. <clears throat> uh, and uh, this minister told this minister that I had done such and such thing. And uh, he said, have you talked to Brother Keith? He said, no. He said, I don't believe it. I won't believe it unless I hear him say it. <laughs> that's, that's a friend of mine. Can you see that? And the guy just kind of bubbled and thought, well, <laughs> that's what I heard. Well, just because you heard it. Don't make it so. It wasn't so. But if he didn't care about me, he'd be quick to believe the lie and the Bible said that gossip is like appetizers. Tasty little tidbits. <laughs> and people get addicted to that kind of stuff. And they want to hear the latest. And they don't realize they are quick to believe evil. And that's an ungodly quality. And they are quick to fear 
and quick to be unbelieving. That's an ungodly, unchristian quality. We should be quick to love, quick to believe the best. People have to prove us wrong. Hmm? We have to be proven otherwise because we, especially our own, right? Especially our own fellow church members, our own family members, our own folks. So and so did that. Your first response ought to be, I doubt it. (laughs) This is a place where it's good to be a doubter. (laughs) You got to prove it to me. Because believing something like this evil thing about my brother, my sister, is a failure to believe in them and a failure to love them, which means I'm not really their friend. Let's grow up. Let's be quick to believe good things. Let's be quick to love. Let's expect the best. And you ought to be the kind of person that even if somebody makes a mistake, you believe they're going to get it fixed. It comes to be proven that what you heard was right and it was bad and it was messed up. Well, your desire is you want to see them repent. Get straightened up. Get it right. And so you just, nobody can rain on your parade. Well, they did this. How do we know? Well, it's proven. May not be true. Well, they did it. Got any pictures? (laughs) Just not accepting it without verifiable proof. Well, there it is. Pictures, video, audio, 12 witnesses. Well, maybe they didn't mean to. (laughs) And maybe they've already repented. (laughs) And God can get them through it. And it can be better than it ever was. Why not be like that? Instead of the first thing you hear and then you go, "Mm, mm, mm." I knew they had a dark side. I knew there was something fishy, something fishy going on there. And people think that makes them look spiritual because I knew. (laughs) Hey, unsaved people got that gift, the gift of suspicion. (laughs) Nothing good about that. (laughs) Quick to believe. Quick to love. Believe in. Quick to forgive. Hmm? What profit is there rehashing all the details, going on and on, bringing it up and bringing it up and telling 12 more people? If you love somebody, now you, know, you don't lie for people. You don't lie. I don't care who it is. You don't lie for them. There is no justifiable occasion to lie ever for anybody. Are you listening to me, saints? Lying is devilish. That's right. yes. Absolutely. One of the most devilish things you can do. No excuse for lying. But you don't, you don't have to tell everything. That's right. You don't have to put it on the news. That's right. Right? Right. People say, what about so-and-so? You may just need to say, well, ask them. Yeah. Hmm? I like, you know, when Noah, after the flood, got drunk, was naked in his tent, drunk, one of his boys came and told everybody about it. He was the one that didn't come out good later either. But some of the other ones took a sheet and walked in backwards till they knew they were about the right place and just dropped it and just walked out. The Bible said love covers a multitude of sins. They're not trying to say it's okay, but love does not want your sin exposed to everybody. Hmm? So it's not going to lie for you, but it's not going to tell everybody either. Are you with me, friends? What scripture are you on? Yes, Second Thessalonians 2. Go to the book of Acts. Acts 8. There's been a move of God in this town. 
People have gotten saved, gotten filled with the Spirit. Miracles and healings have taken place. And there was a man named Simon who was a sorcerer. And he got saved too. Acts 8.13, Simon himself believed. And when he was baptized, so he believed and he, he got baptized. Is he saved? If, he, if he's not, <laughs> there's whole denominations that ain't saved. He believed. Hmm? And he acted on his faith and is baptized. But Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized will be saved. Didn't he say that? Yeah, he's saved. Certainly he is. He continued with Philip at wondering and beholding the miracles and signs that were done. Verse 19 though, he said, give me this power so that whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Is he thinking right? And he offered him money to, to, to try to buy the, the gift. And man, the Spirit of God through Peter was pretty rough with him. He said, your money perish with you. You and your money both. Because you have what? You have thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Verse 21, you have neither part nor lot in this matter. You're nowhere close to being involved in these things because, why? Your heart is not right in the sight of God. Now look at this. His thoughts are not right and his heart is not right either. Can you see these are connected? Thoughts, thinking's not right and his heart's not right. He believed, he's baptized, he's born again. But see, just because you're born again doesn't mean you automatically think right. He's been all these years in this vein of uh, sorcery and showmanship and he finds a real thing and he thinks, man, I got to have that. That's what I need right there. And so he offers to buy, but his thinking is way off. I don't think he realized how far off his thinking was. Because in the sorcery world, you offer to buy somebody's trick. It's not necessarily an insult. Thinking. Your, your thinking can be so far off and yet you not realize it. You think it's no big deal. And yet it's a deal you should be rebuked about strongly. And this is part of growing up. If you can't take some correction and rebuke, then you can't grow up. You, the person sitting beside you, the person sitting in front of you, the person sitting behind you and me need occasional correction. And sometimes we are so far off we need some strong rebuke. Is it fun? No. And you could have get the, you've been kidding yourself for years that you already know everything till it hurts your pride. And somebody tells you, you are off the wall on that. Man, you ain't even in the right county. Where did you come up with that? Now you can get offended and go, hmm. Oh. Well, if you think everything you, we ain't talking about them, we're talking about you. Yeah. Stay on the subject. <laughs> you should immediately go into examination mode. Is my thinking really that far off? And a lot of times it is. And you just need to fess up and go, wow, I have been way off in how I have seen that. Why would we assume we have already arrived at total Christ likeness in every way we think? Go to the 28th chapter. Let's see, I'm a, I tell you, I, I, I meant for you to stop in chapter 14. That's what it was. Thank you, Lord. Chapter 14. 
Acts 14, on your way to 28, just drop off right there. Chapter 14, verse 1. Came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews. These are the apostles. And they so spake that a great multitude both of the Jews and also of the Greeks believed. Verse 2. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and did what? Made their minds evil affected against the brethren. They, they made their minds evil affected against the brethren. The NIV put that up there for us. It says they poisoned their minds against the brothers. Now, these people didn't know much about the apostles. They didn't know much about Paul. And yet, when these other people come and they tell them all this junk about them, they're simpletons and just eat it up yeah. and just believe it. Should they have allowed themselves to be upset and mad and alienated, alienate themselves from Paul, the Word of God and the ministry? No, but they did. I know uh, Brother Kenneth Hagin, my father in the faith, was invited to a certain denominational, it was actually a multi-denominational meeting that he had been excluded from for decades toward the end of his life, somebody there did something and invited him and he felt impressed to come. So he did. And he spoke in a night service. And one of the main leaders of the thing got up with tears and said, I, I repent. I believe everything that man said. He said, I have warned my people for years don't read his books. Don't buy any of that man's stuff because it's heresy. It's error. And he said, I'd never heard him myself. He, said, he cried and he said, I believe everything this man, I believe just like you do. I believe every word. But now think about that. Yet decades and how many people influence minds poisoned against this whole, against what? Against how to be healed by faith, yeah. how to have authority in the name of Jesus, yeah. how to be led by the Spirit of God. Yes. Come on, are you listening to me? Yes. Things they needed. Yes. Things could have helped them, could have saved their lives. Yes. Well, you can sure see why the devil would do this, yes. right? Because in effect, he's cut them off from a whole supply of the Spirit that they needed. But see, when you just hear something, and the, the problem is it can come through people you love and respect because they assumed and didn't check it out. And just because you respect them, you just buy it without examination. And because you think wrong, you separate yourself, you assume things, and tell other people these lies. There's been a lot of mistakes made in these areas, haven't there? It comes back to fear, selfishness, pride, don't want anybody to think you're associated with them. What will they think at my church? Well, there's somebody else you should be more concerned right. about. Right. <laughs> huh? Because in the end, you're not going to stand before your church. You're not going to stand before any deacon board or any denominational elders. It's just going to be you in front of the Lord Amen. and me in front of Him. Early in our ministry, I began to get invitations from outside Word and Faith circles from some interesting places. And uh, <clears throat> I just received, we just received one and went to a place that had not had a speaker outside of their denomination for 50 years. And they had me come in there. It was different. 
And man, you know, the Lord led me to have a healing service. <laughs> you talk about different from what was on their books. <laughs> and to give an altar call for people to come get filled with the Spirit. Oh, oh man, I did it with fear and trembling. <laughs> I was there for a couple of services. And the Sunday morning service, great big stone cathedral and stained glass. And I'm standing out on the steps with the, the pastor and, and people are walking by, shaking hands, you know, very, very reserved. And one by one, <coughs> they would reach their hand out to me and they'd lean in and go, I was healed last night. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> It happened numerous times. They take my hand. One guy leaned in. He said, "I got filled with the Spirit last night." <laughs> <laughs> and yet, I've had people last sometime. It get, got back to me. They said, "They asked me, why did Brother Keith go over there? Why was he over there? Has he changed affiliation?" <laughs> Now, I've always just had one affiliation. <laughs> just one. That's to the Lord. Amen. And he loves his kids everywhere. No matter what banner, what culture. Huh? And if he loves them, you, you better love them. Right? And... Uh, it, it actually is, is a wonderful thing to be able to fellowship with different parts of the body of Christ that are substantially different from you. Because yes. you'll learn some things. Yeah. You'll learn that a lot of stuff you thought was God is just your ways. Yeah. Because the, the Spirit is the same. But uh, I've had people, other churches I went to, they said, well, why did he, you know, that, that man has taught some error in this. For all they knew, the Lord was sending me there to help them. Right? But see, there's the, why, why bring that up? Folks are too quick to be negative and to assume the worst and to find fault and, and to, to get a, 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 you know, twist up their nose and go, what's going on there? You sound suspicious. Because the truth is, they are ready to believe something ugly. They're ready. They're primed to believe. Oh, they did this and they did that. And they preached. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Wrong thinking. They, they evil influence. They poison the minds of the brethren. How many think you could be answerable for that? If, if you poison somebody's mind against a brother, against a sister, and because they receive that wrong thinking and it affects what they say about them and it affects what they do and don't do with them. The Lord dealt with me some years ago. I, I, I wasn't realizing my words were having more effect. More people knew my words and, and put stock in them. And the Lord, I said something, and man, the Lord got on me uh, afterwards. Because I, I, I didn't say anything really bad in my mind, but it, was, it just kind of left a question mark about a person. And the Lord dealt with me. He said, do you understand that man now is not going to have that man to his church for a meeting because of your response? You want to be responsible for a meeting that didn't happen? Whew. No. I repented on my face with tears and tried to make it right. Our words matter, don't they? Let's not let the enemy use it. Say it out loud, I'm not quick to believe evil. I'm not quick to judge. I'm quick to believe good. Amen. You can have, even if you get off, you can have a quick change. 
in your mind and in your heart. Go to Acts 28. I'm thinking about closing. Acts 28. It's an interesting study. I'm doing it while I'm doing this series to just go through and look at every time where the Lord told people, don't think this way. Think not. Don't think. Think not. I mean scores of times. He told people, don't think this way. Don't think this. Don't think that. Think not this. Scores of times. He told them, don't think that way. He never changes. So he's still telling us, isn't he? Don't think this. Don't think that. But in order for us to, to develop in this, we've got to stop assuming we know what to think. And even though it seems obvious, we need to stop and pause and go, Lord, how should I think? What should I think about this? And even if you start down the wrong path, you can change quickly. You see this in Acts 28. Acts 28, 4. Paul and his company have been shipwrecked on this island. And even though he didn't drown out there in the storm, a snake bites him. And when the islanders saw the, the snake, the venomous beast, hanging on his hand, they all knew this snake. This snake bites you. You're dead. And they thought, no doubt, this man is a murderer. Was he a murderer? No, who are they talking about? Paul, our beloved Paul. They said, this man is a murderer. And though he escaped the sea, vengeance suffers him not to live. He thought he got by, sorry rascal, murderer, killer. But he didn't get away. The snake got him. <laughs> now this is how the whole bunch of them are thinking. Is it wrong thinking? Totally wrong. They don't know this man, but they have decided. Got to be it. He's a murderer. Look at him. Look at that squint in his eye. I can see it. <laughs> murderer for sure. Yeah, he's a bad man. Whew, I knew it first time I saw him. Bad man. Verse 5. He shook off the beast into the fire. And felt no harm. Verse 6. They looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they looked a great while and saw no harm come to him. <laughs> what did they do? 180. Everybody say quick change. quick change. Hey, when you're wrong, you're wrong. And when you see you're wrong, don't play around. Swap ends. Whew. They changed their minds and said, you know, he must be a god. <laughs> he ain't no murderer. Wow. Well, this is being quite unstable, yeah. isn't it? In your thinking. You're here. You're over there. This is how it is. And this is how it is. The Lord didn't intend for us to be that way. change. Of course, if you believe he's a murderer and he's getting what's coming to him, you're going to treat him a certain way. Yeah, right. If you believe he's a God, yeah. you're going to treat him quite differently yeah. Yeah. than you treat them. Can you see, it's going to turn you into a different person with them yeah. just based on thinking this or this. People try to hide it, but you can't really. How they think about you is going to come out. Even when they're trying to paste on a smile and be cordial and social, they just can't treat you right if they don't think right about you. Go back to Proverbs. Proverbs 16.3. This is a great word. 
How can we keep from flip-flopping all over the place, and being so unstable and thinking off the wall and goofy stuff? Look at this word. Commit your works unto the Lord. Tell me what will happen. What will happen? Your thoughts shall be locked down. Established. How many want your thoughts to be right and your thoughts to be established? Not moved all over the place. The New King James says, commit your works to the Lord. Your thoughts will be established. And the Dewey uh, translation says, lay open your works to the Lord and your thoughts shall be directed. Now we just got through talking about this before. Don't assume you know how to think about any of these situations. Come before the Lord and open up yourself and say, Lord, tell me how to think. Tell me how to see them. I ask you how to think think about them. Help me to see them through your eyes. Help me to see them the way you want me to see them. Help me to see myself the way you want me to see myself. And don't assume you know how to think. And if you commit and and open up your works and commit your works to the Lord, He will be able to come in and establish your thoughts. Get you established in the right way of thinking so that you're not moved by every rumor and thought and feeling that comes along. Oh, friend, you'll be so much happier. When you get to the place where you, no matter what you feel and how it strikes you and what kind of feelings and how strong they are and how real they are, you do not just believe it and you do not just yield to it. You go, hold on, hold on. Where did this come from? Hold on. And instead of being presumptuous, you go, Lord, show me what to think about this. How should I respond? How should I think? Back up to Proverbs 3. We know this passage well, but it, uh, it goes right along with this. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, 5. What does it say? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do what? Huh? Huh? Don't assume you know. How to think about this. Don't lean to your own understanding. Verse 6, get it, get it. In all your ways, everything that's going on, do what? Open the door. Open up your works to Him and invite Him in. Ask Him, acknowledge Him and ask Him, Lord, show me how to think. Show me what's really going on here. How I should really perceive this. what action I should take, what I should say, what I should think. Don't assume you know. In all your ways, acknowledge him and what will happen? He shall direct your paths and you won't blare in and say something stupid and hurtful that you'll be embarrassed and ashamed of later. You'll act with some wisdom. You'll speak in love. You'll speak in faith. You'll know the right thing to say at the right time. You'll be a blessing. You'll be an encouragement. You'll be a strength. And even if other people are bailing on them, they'll know somebody loves them. Somebody still believes in them. And it could make the difference in their situation. The devil's trying to get them to tell you, well, give up, forget it. Nobody believes in you. Nobody cares. Everybody hates you. And they come across you. And the Lord says, see there, it ain't true. Everybody doesn't hate you. That's right. They still love you. That's right. They're not going to call wrong right, but they still believe in you. They still believe you can get past this. Right. They still believe you can overcome this. They still believe you can be used of God. Yes. Still. Yes. We should be believers. The spirit of faith about us that just cannot be conquered. Stand on your feet. Let me preach at you just a moment here. We got the spirit of faith. It is the unconquerable spirit. Cannot be defeated. Spirit. Are you with me? 
Put it up on the screen. I, I want us to read it and shout about it. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Verse uh, 13 says, We got the same spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians 4 13. We got the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. And verse 8 describes the spirit of faith. We are troubled on every side, yet. Come on now, this, this is spirit of faith. Yes. What about trouble? Man, I heard y'all got trouble. Yes. Heard you got trouble. Whew, I heard you didn't just have a little trouble. You got trouble on the north. You got trouble on the south. You got trouble on the east. You got trouble on the west. You got trouble on the northeast and the southwest. <laughs> you got trouble on every side. And you can go, yeah, right. I ain't saying we don't. That's right. But, we are not distressed over it. We are perplexed, but not in despair. You don't have to know everything. It's not getting us down. Somebody say, it's not getting me down. No matter what, it's not getting me down. Verse 9, persecuted, not forsaken. The Lord's still with me. See, the Lord Jesus himself is this way. When he told them, he said, all of you are going to forsake me tonight. Every one of you is going to leave me. But I am not alone. Because the Father that sent me, he's with me. Amen. Positive. Yes. Cast down. Hmm? Oh, I heard y'all got knocked down. Oh, I heard. I'm so sorry. Don't be. <laughs> Because <laughs> knocked down is not knocked out. Right. It's not the end. Right. Cast down, but not destroyed. You can not only be that way about yourself, you can be that way about your brother. And even if they've been a faltering and wavering, it'll help them. And they say, well, this ain't no use. Nobody cares. No, I messed up too bad. I've messed everything up. You go, no, you, you can't mess up something too bad for God to fix well, I just don't feel. Well, isn't it good we don't walk by feelings? Amen. I just don't know. Yeah, but you can know. Amen. We're not quitting. Amen. Yeah, but. No, but. What about? No, no. Not forsaken. That's right. Not destroyed. Right. Not in distress. Yeah. Not defeated. Yeah. There's breath. There's hope. God's on the throne. It's not over. It's not over for you. It's not over for me. It's not over for them. You can still be forgiven. You can still be healed. You can still be delivered. You can still, be, you can still have some honor. You know something that blesses me? David, King David, man after God's own heart, he really messed up with uh, Bathsheba and uh, some of the other things, I mean, he, the Lord himself told him, he said, you, that he'd done things that caused people to reproach the name of God in the kingdoms. And he was driven from his home as an older man, out like a fugitive, hiding, running, shamed. Uh, his son took his wives up on the roof, in the sight of everybody. Terrible. And yet, you know, what is the 51st Psalm? that he prays and cries out, oh God, uh, don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Create in me a clean heart. And the joy of my salvation, let me, let me, let me have it back. And he went through some stuff. His own fault. But the Bible said at the end of his life, he died an old man with honor. That's right. That's right. Riches Everybody say honor. honor. After all that? Yeah. With honor? Yes. Yes. No matter how terribly you mess up, it's not what you've done. What are you going to do? Are you going to give up and quit? Are you going to believe that God is so big and so gracious and so kind and so loving that there's still hope? There's still salvation. There's still deliverance. The devil, oh, the devil is a, such a negative 
soul. He's always trying to tell you, it's too late, it's too, too much happened, it's no, no time, it's, it's over, it's over, it's over. Say liar. liar. He's a liar. 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 Nothing's too hard for the Lord. Lift up your hands, close your eyes, just lift up your hands to the Lord. Tell the Lord, say, Lord, I believe it. I believe, I believe in you. Oh, come on, just tell him in your own words. Just say, Lord, I believe in you. I worship you. I believe it's not too late. It's not too hard. Things are not too far gone. There is hope in you. There is help in you. Oh, I'm thanking you. I'm thanking you. I'm thanking you. I'm praising you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 